So in this video, I want to go through some of the modeling assumptions and simplifying assumptions that we use in mechanics. I mean, mechanics is, um, by its very nature, a, a very difficult thing to deal with. You're applying mathematics to real life problems. And there are so many variables to consider, generally, that you know, you've got to think about, well, where do I start? And you start by making the problem as simple as you possibly can. Okay, so there are certain things that you can start to ignore, like uh, air resistance, for example. Okay, um, uh, and I'm going to go through kind of like a number of different things that we can that you can incorporate into these problems, and you'll read these questions, which will have a lot of key words for which you need to know what they mean. Okay, what can you infer from a problem that uh, says that something is light? For example, okay. So, um, what does each of these mean when you uh, come across them in a worded problem? So, we're going to start off with this light. Then, what does it mean for something to be light? So, if I say that something is uh, quite light, okay, then uh, it's not heavy, okay. And when I say it's light in a mechanics problem, then I mean that it has negligible mass okay so um, negligible mass and so it is something that I can ignore the mass of the object I can ignore okay so um, that's something to consider with light uh, static would mean that it's uh, stay still okay so if you're static you're in one place okay so the body's not moving uh, rough now, um, different surfaces, okay, you know, if you, as you meet them, like a road or a carpet or the top of a tabletop, a wooden tabletop, for example, uh, will have different roughnesses, okay, and uh, blocks, if you are moving them across these different surfaces, will behave in different ways, okay? So a surface that is considered to be rough means that there is friction working against the object, okay? So um, if I was to push a block across the carpet, for example, I would meet more friction uh, that's working against me than I would if I was pushing a block across um, a frozen lake. Okay? Um, so rough means that there is friction involved, whereas smooth means that there is no friction to consider. The friction is negligible. Okay? So we don't need to concern ourselves with the um, friction in that problem. Now, um, rigid means that um, you know if something is rigid, then it cannot be bent. Okay, um, so a rigid um, body just um, means that you cannot bend it. Uh, thin means that it's got negligible thickness. Okay, so if something's thin, it's negligibly th negligibly thick. So we don't need to worry about how thick the uh, thing is. Um, particle. Now, if you are modeling something as a particle, the idea is that uh, air resistance wouldn't affect it. Okay? So, whereas uh, this book, for example, this textbook uh, going through the air will meet uh, air resistance more than uh, this pen will, for example. Okay? Um, now, if I don't want to consider air resistance in the problem, then I just shrink my particle down, okay, and model the problem as a particle, and uh, then I can ignore things like air resistance, okay? So, consequently, if it's a particle, I don't need to worry about its dimensions and what effect that will have, okay? Now, what else have we got? Now, a plane. A plane is just a flat surface, okay? Now, if you've done any kind of uh, uh, three-dimensional vectors, for example, um, if, especially if, you're, uh, if you've done some further maths, then you'll understand planes as um, uh, surfaces in three dimensions, okay? Like the floor, for example, or this wall, okay, uh, could be considered a plane, and it's just a surface, flat surface. Uh, a laminar... 
A lamina is a 2D object, okay? Um, for example, like a rectangle, um, it's flat, thin. Um, it could be like a, a sign that's being held up in position, for example, um, something like that. Now, a beam or a rod, okay, we're talking about um, a, a thin, straight uh, bit of wood, for example, that uh, people are stood on. Um, we would be considering, considering it as a rigid body, okay, because uh, we're not thinking of it being able to bend. Uh, a wire, okay, um, if you've got the situation of using a wire, then um, we've got the situation that you would consider it as thin, okay. We'd also say, right, that it is inextensible. You'll see this word quite a lot, inextensible. Okay, now what that means is that it doesn't stretch. Okay, um, if you start to get uh, problems where you've got stretching involved, uh, then you start to have to deal with things like Hooke's Law, okay, uh, which we don't have a look at in A-level, um, well, A-level maths, that is, uh, further maths is another matter. Now, whereas um, the wire was uh, rigid, okay, uh, we wouldn't be saying that that could be bent. String, okay, however, um, is thin. Uh, we would consider it as inextensible, okay, uh, but it's not rigid. Okay, a string. Uh, so r string can wrap around things, okay, such as a pulley, which I'll get to in a moment. A peg is uh, a fixed support, so something that you can uh, rest something on or hang something from. Whereas a pulley uh, is a smooth disc, effectively, where you can have the string wrapped around the pulley, okay? And we'll be looking at pulley problems um, later on in this section on forces, where we're going to be looking at how uh, particles behave. If one's heavier than the other, what's going to happen to the system, okay? So all of these different words that you're seeing here uh, can be incorporated into the mechanics problems that we deal with in this section, and you just need to understand what they mean when they pop up, okay? What can you infer uh, from the problem if you're given that information?